Michael O. McCarthy is making a film about what happened to Rosewood, New Year's Day and the days afterwards, 1923. Minnie Lee Langley is one of the two or three survivors still alive today. Where were you, Minnie, when uh, the white men came to Rosewood? At home. At home. Uh, sisters and brothers with you? My grandmother. Me and her and, and one more sister were staying out in the yard. Right. And what, did you hear something? None, but these people came down the railroad, and they asked her, did she see anybody come through there? And she told them no. Right. These were white men? White men. With guns? Yes. And uh, <clears throat> what happened to your Aunt Sarah? Well, they came back that afternoon and went to shooting and shot in the window and killed her. They shot her through the head. For no reason? No reason. Were you there at the time? Yes, I was there too. And you heard, you saw that happen? Yes. And you saw the white men just shoot your Aunt Sarah for no reason? Yeah, and I seen them shot her down. They shot through the window and killed her. And she rolled over in the bed and one of her daughters was sleeping with her, one of my cousins. She came upstairs and told us that my aunt was dead because they done killed her. And what happened to your grandfather? Oh, they uh, shot, made him dug his own grave and shot him back within the grave. They made him dug his grave? Yeah, he didn't have a one arm. They made him dig his grave? Dig his own then grave. Then he stood there and they shot they him. They shot him back in his grave. And he fell back in the grave. Yeah. Were you scared? Yes, I was. Yeah. I, bet. Was scared. I bet you were scared. And so how did how did you escape? What happened? Where did you go? Well, one of my aunts, Beulah, she taken us to the woods. Right. And she got to the woods and hit us down on the ground behind some bushes. And we stayed there four days out four in the days? woods. And this man conduct on the train sent a word to bring us back into the Wallace, and and he would uh, taking us, bring us to Gainesville. He would take you to Gainesville. Yeah, taking us to Gainesville. <laughs> and so after four days, they got you out of there, and you went to Gainesville. Yes. Did you ever go back to Rosewood? No, I You've didn't. Never been no, back to Rosewood. I don't want to go back there. You don't. No. Why? I'm scared right on. Still scared. Seventy years later. I don't want to have no place, nothing to do with that place. Do you still have memories? Yes. What he did, my grandmother and my grandfather, and took everything we had. Killed your grandmother, sure. too? Yeah, no, they didn't kill her, but they shot her through the fingers. And, uh, the way he did, my grandfather and my grandmother, I had a good family. And I love my grandmother to death. And when she departed from me, it looked like everything gone I had ever had. My mother, I didn't never know my mother. She died when I was a baby. So you were brought up by your grandmother? By my grandmother, and I love her. I love her laying right in the way she at now. And they took her from me and took my grandfather from me. That's all it wrote to my life. How many people, Michael, have you discovered who were killed those days in Rosewood? There was a, there was a population of about 200 to 300 people who lived in the, this little in, independent hamlet. Uh, now, we, we should set the record straight. This was a town, mostly black people. About 90, 95 percent. Uh, a couple of hundred people mm -hmm. who are thriving. Community. Thriving, they owned their own homes. There was three churches. Churches had uh, steeples, organs, windows. The houses had windows. These were not shacks, uh, as some have proclaimed. Uh, they made their, their uh, living in the woods, uh, working in the turpentine mill. Some of them worked in the wood mill down at Sumner, where Ms. Taylor, the white woman, lived. Uh, and, and the black women in the town, some of them worked in Sumner for the white women, as was the custom during that period. So they knew the intimate 
uh, details of the white people's lives. So but there was still kind of a segregated atmosphere. The black people lived we in We were 60, 60 years post the war between the states and a, a little over 50 years since the counter-revolution when they overthrew Reconstruction. Right. So, so the South was not only segregated, uh, and the North as well, sure. but it was being dominated by something close to, well, I'll give you an example. From 1900 to 1915, the count was uh, 1,100 uh, black people lynched. This was above and beyond the people killed in the institutions, the wow. prisons. It was above and beyond the massacres at Tulsa and so forth. Yeah. So it, it was not uncommon for uh, white men to kill black people on a regular basis. All right. And so the white people basically lived in Sumner, black people lived in Rosewood. To the degree that that's true, yes. Is that right, many when yeah, you were growing some up? Yeah, some of them, there's a few white people lived there, but not as many right. white as the bus color. Right. It was more... Another Rosewood survivor, your cousin, Lee Ruth. Yes. I visited she Lee Ruth. She was with me. Yeah. She's sick now. Though. I know she is, but I went down to Florida and I talked to her, okay? Yes. Have you seen Lee Ruth for, how long has it been since you've seen Lee Ruth? Oh, not about three or four years now because she was down to a funeral. We used to have one of our okay. brother's funerals. We watch television. When we come back, I'm going to talk to Lee Ruth, okay, and have okay. her memories of all okay. this. Okay. Lee Ruth has some uh, vivid memories, not fun memories. She saw a man hanged, his body shot at Rosewood shortly after New Year's Day, 1923. A racial crime was committed 70 years ago in western Florida. Uh, that crime has been described as a massacre. A town was wiped out. Joining me now is uh, Janie Bradley Black. Uh, her aunt, Lee Ruth Davis, is one of the survivors of the Rosewood Massacre. Lee Ruth was just seven years old at the time, and uh, she was Minnie, she's Minnie's cousin, too. I went to Florida to talk to Lee Ruth, who is very ill, uh, but she still has plenty to say. Lee Ruth Davis is 77, her memories of Rosewood still vivid. The recent attack in Tampa on Christopher Wilson hits close to home. Did you hear, Lee Ruth, that 70 years ago to the day, on January 1st, in Tampa, Florida, an Afro-American was set on fire by some white people? I don't know who shot this up. I said, but they starting up the wrong thing. It's gonna be blood running downstream here. How's it going to be more than one blood running? Because feelings really haven't changed in 70 years? Do the whites still feel this way about blacks? A lot of them do. A lot of them. A lot of them do. It was a thirst for blood that drove a white mob into Rosewood seven decades ago. First, it was Sam Carter they were looking for, a man the whites claim was hiding a rapist. Lee yeah. Ruth calls him innocent. And so they took Sam Carter back there. I'm looking at that big tree right now. You're looking at the big tree? And hanged Sam Carter to that tree and shot him all to pieces. They're going to come in with a truckload yeah, of white people, white people and kill everything they yeah, see yeah. in Rosewood. It's black. That it's black. The white men were looking for you as well, looking for kids too. Yeah, oh, it was killing anything, breathing, if he was black. Now, if you wasn't black, you might be saved. And they were looking for black people. Yeah, they were looking for black people. It's like they're hunting. It's strange that even though what happened in Rosewood, what those white people did to the black people in Rosewood, there was one white man who saved you, your brothers, and sisters. One. One. Just God one. God sent man, Mr. Wright. That man was John Wright, a white man who lived in this stately home, the only house that wasn't burned to the ground. Wright hid most of the women and children here until the army arrived. It was then Lee Ruth was put on a train headed out of town. It had soldiers on each side. Soldiers all the way down. To the station. All the way from a, for a mile, from, from Mr. Wright's house to the station, so that you and the rest of the women and children could leave. Yeah, walk between those soldiers to the train. So that was the last time as a child yeah. you ever saw Rosewood. That's right, the last time. Lee Ruth landed in Gainesville. Three months later, she was reunited with her father, but not with her home. We were not poor. Oh, no, we were not We had money and we had plenty to eat. We had plenty of farm. We had everything we needed. And it was all destroyed. What do you want? What do you think you deserve 
I deserve my home back. I will, I'll for what my home is worth. As the good book says, never too late to do good. I want to thank you very much for talking with us because I know you haven't been feeling well lately. One thing I can say. Yes. If you do nothing come out from it, the story is always on the record. The story is there. Whoever want to read it, and it's a true story.